So what we're doing today is uh, releasing some uh, what we call parasitic wasps uh, that we have bred and reared uh, in our um, Great Lakes Forestry Center uh, Research Center. And uh, these are um, wasps that are very specific to emerald ash borer. So what we're doing is releasing them into areas that are infested with this beetle, which is extremely devastating insect pest. And we're hoping that the wasps themselves, which attack and kill uh, the larva of the EAB underneath the bark, that they will become established and over a long time uh, help to reduce this uh, devastating insect pest. What's neat, you know, the wasps are safely underneath the bark right now. They're just going to finish their development as the temperature warms up and then as soon as they come out they'll start searching the bark of this tree. If they don't find anything they like, they can move from tree to tree. Uh, somebody was asking inside, uh, we do know that they move uh, maybe a couple kilometers uh, each year or every couple years. So they are spreading across the landscape fairly well. This is the first uh, release of the, the parasites, or parasi parasitoids, sorry, uh, that we are uh, have reared locally at our center in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, but we have been doing releases in Canada since 2013. Uh, and to date, what we've been doing is getting them uh, from our U.S. collaborators. They have a large rearing facility in Brighton, Michigan, and they've produced something like 1.2 million uh, parasitoids last year uh, for release across the states and into Ontario and Quebec and so in December of 2017, 16 sorry, what we did was we started to do some rearing of our own uh, to increase the numbers that are available and to also have a backup a colony of these uh, wasps that attack EAB. These are what we call mini bolts uh, and right now they have some emerald ash borer larvae underneath the bark but they have been attacked by these little parasite uh, wasps, parasitoid wasps. So you actually will have uh, broods of wasps underneath the bark and they're very tiny. They're not what you would think of as a typical wasp you know, attacking you at your picnic. They're only a, a few millimeters in size and as the wasps finish their development they will emerge from the bolt and they will start walking up that tree and this tree surrounding it looking for uh, eel be larva to attack. So it's important to, to just comment that they're very specific to emerald ash borer. Essentially that's all they want to eat. So there are no human health risk or risk to any other animals or, or insects or anything. But one of the things we look for is somewhere with a high amount of ash and everywhere, every tree practically I can see here except for a couple of birch is an ash tree here. So if you picture this area, we do have emerald ash borer in it. Uh, we were looking at the tree uh, there with some woodpecker feet Eating. He's got one with some uh, galleries back there. So if you picture within four or five years, this will be completely killed by the emerald ash borer. So it basically kills 99% or more of trees within four to five years. Um, so these wasps, they won't protect these current trees necessarily. We're not expecting that, you know, it's, caused, it's solved the problem. We're not going to have an issue. Uh, but long term, we hope that they keep the beetle population at a lower level and help the trees that are regenerating uh, to persist. So this project is still really in its early stages in Canada. We've been doing it since 2013. And we have been able to go back and, and determine that, yeah, the wasps are still living. They're persisting in the areas where we've put them. But we've not yet begun to study what kind of impact impact they may be having, uh, you know, are they uh, keeping the population lower, killing lots of larvae. Uh, so what we anticipate, what we plan is to do some monitoring of the impact over time. Uh, but again, it could take many years before we actually see what the impact is. Uh, we know in the U.S. The, the levels of parasitism are increasing over time and they think that they are helping a little bit to slow the population of EAB, but not not at an enough level that you would protect a given tree. But again, over the long term, we hope that this will provide uh, some better regulation in the future.